Hello and welcome back to this series of VMware Virtualization 101. My name is Raheem Sheikh and in this video I'm going to talk about the virtualizations and types of virtualization. Let's get started. So what is virtualization? Uh, virtualization is a concept which basically a virtualize software, uh, virtualize your, your components which are in the data center with the help of software. So I hope everyone is, is aware about the concept called software and hardware. Very high level, the software means the things which you cannot see and touch and hardware means the things which you can see and touch. Similarly, virtualization, the virtual machine, it's kind of a software or piece of files which basically you cannot see and touch but they are running on one big hardware. Uh, there are many types of virtualizations are available in IT industry. Uh, we have a, a compute virtualization and uh, the compute virtualization means the resources of the compute park like a CPU, memory, network that gets virtualized. Uh, it's called a virtual machine virtualization. We have a storage virtualization. Uh, we do have a network virtualization as well. So there are so many things which we do in i 2 world that's virtualized uh, in terms of better use of hardware uh, cost and uh, saving in the cost. Uh, then you can scale the environment and there are so many, so many features comes with the virtualization. Uh, there are two types of main virtualizations in uh, VMware uh, as we are learning about a VMware technology or any other technology there are basically main two concepts in the in the uh, server virtualization so let's concentrate that what we are doing so so what we are doing what what used to happen earlier we used to have a data center and in the data center we used to have rack we still have a data center okay and in the data center what we have we have a rack and in this rack we have servers placed and uh, depending upon your workload depending upon your your requirement uh, you have to insert the servers. For example, you have a web server, you have AD server, you have DB, you have file server, so and so forth. If you have multiple applications and uh, you require multiple web servers, multiple database servers, uh, testing servers, you have dedicated lab for the development team. And just similarly, this rack and, and compute resources goes on and on as per the organization requirements or, or as any company grows from start or, or small to medium to the enterprise. And we used to have a number of data centers and every server used to have their own hardware. Just to save on that cost, space and, and the uh, uh, cost electricity there are so many things which we can which can which virtualization help to save but just to save amount of this this hardware and the and the storage as well and the network because each server needs to have connectivity with storage so for storage connectivity you need a storage switch for uh, network connectivity you need that mean number of network switches and uh, for you, you also need to have the router security devices and so many devices as per your compute requirement. And just to say on that, the virtualization came into the picture. So the VMware started their, their, their features or sale, selling as a, as a server consolidation. They were selling their product. Uh, VMware 4.0 and 3.5, they, they started calling it as a consolidation pro project where you can consolidate everything in, in one rack or, or you can put most of the servers in one physical server. So I will explain you that as well. Uh, but let's come back to the, to, the, to the previous discussion what I was explaining, the types of virtualization. So in server virtualization, I have two main types. One is called a bare metal virtualization. So in bare metal virtualization, what happens is your virtual machines, I'll create a diagram and I'll explain you. There's another type called hosted virtualization. So let me explain you with, with the better diagram. 
So let's assume we had this track and with the help of server virtualization, VMware came and they said, what you can do, you have, let's assume you have 50 servers in your rack. Uh, probably the rack is not that big, you can put 50 servers. Sometimes yes, if you have smaller servers, like one U servers, because rack mostly comes with 42U or 47U as for the site. So you can have total 50 servers in your data centers, let's assume. And what you can do, the VMware says, you can handle that load on five servers. So just buy a big five powerful servers and you can have those 50 servers running as a virtual machine. So let's assume I have a one big box of physical, bo physical server. You install a hypervisor. When you install the hypervisor, that gives you the access to create a small virtual machine. And you can define the size for that virtual machine. And you can run those VMs as an individual operating systems and individual box. So your development team and your, your other users will not understand whether it's a physical box or virtual machine. They will have the access to the server via remote desktop or uh, application. However, this physical box will be capable of handling, uh, let's say, 10 virtual machines load. So earlier you were having 50 uh, servers in your data centers. Now that workload can be handled by five servers. So that will save on your space. That will save on your electricity. That will save your cooling. Also, overall, that will be savings in terms of dollars or money. Because uh, earlier you were you were having 50 servers. Now you are just having five servers, and you need to have that physical availability or uh, physical space for those five servers and cooling, as well as electricity for five servers only. Then. Uh, to manage these servers, the VMware also came with so many features. I'll be having a separate sessions on that, of course. Second part, so, so I, I, I was trying to explain you the bare metal virtualization. So, so this VM has a direct access to the physical hardware. The hypervisor is just a uh, small footprint which basically provides access virtual machine to the hardware directly. Okay. In, in hosted environment, I'm sure everyone is familiar with the hosted environment because everyone must have used a features or, or application called uh, uh, VMware Player, where you can create a virtual machine on your laptop. So your laptop, for example, your laptop having you know, RAM and CPU, when you go ahead and you create a you install a VMware player or VMware workstation or any other virtualization software like a Microsoft uh, server, virtual server used to come. So if you install that, you can create a virtual machine on your laptop or desktop. And from your laptop, you can provide some CPU, RAM and, and resources to the virtual machine. And you can install the operating systems on that virtual machine. But in this case, what happened, let's assume you have this laptop, all right? In this laptop, let's say you have 8 gig of RAM and core to DO or core core CPU, right? On top of it, you have the operating systems. Then you have that virtualization software, which is player or workstation. And then you create the virtual machine. As the laptop does not have that much of, of resources also, uh, it has this this player has a dependency on the OS so your virtual machine will talk to the hardware via your operating system which is on your laptop and uh, that put additional burden on the hardware but here in the bare metal virtualization uh, your virtual machines will have direct access to the physical hardware and uh, whenever if you compare the bare metal and, and the hosted virtualization it's it's 